Hello everyone and uh, welcome to ICD's second webinar. Um, today we'll be talking about um, studying interior design online and um, we are joined by Eunice from Wales and Kirsty from Queensland. So they're both um, starting the diploma um, right now. So they're at the end of their course or just about to finish. Um, and we're also joined by Smita. Um, she's um, the course advisor. So she'll be popping up um, towards the end of the, um, the webinar, just to answer a few of your questions and just go over the course a little bit more. So, um, just a little bit of background for those who are joining us for the first time. Um, ICD, uh, we've got a long history, 37 year history, and we've been producing graduates since 1986. Um, we have a range of online courses, which you can see there. Um, and Smita will be going over those um, a little bit later on in more detail. Um, but for now, I would like to officially welcome Eunice and Kirsty. Um, so, as I said, Eunice is from Wales and Kirsty is from Queensland. Hi, guys. Hey, Hi. how are you? Um, I was just thinking when I was saying um, Eunice from Wales and Kirsty from Queensland, it sounds like a Netflix TV show. Like, you're both interior design students, one from either side. <laughs> <laughs> we should pitch that later on. That just came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, we'll be talking with them today. Day, um, about their exam, how they've travelled throughout the program and um, we'll also be taking, um, Smita will be um, taking any questions that you may have um, um, in the chat. So if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and uh, we can let, um, answer it later on. Um, for now, I'll just get everyone to make sure that um, their cameras are off. Um, that um, they've got their full name in the um, Zoom profile um, and that their uh, microphones are turned off as well. So um, what I might do is I might just um, stop sharing so we can just have a little chat um, and then we can talk about um, um, how we're going in the course. So to get started, Eunice, I think I've lost your little camera there. You can turn your camera back on, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought we'd just keep the cameras on while we have our little chat. Oh, so um, how's it going there in Wales? Well, um, it's autumn here now, so it's beautiful and just yeah. uh, watching all the colours changing. Uh, we have moved to Wales just over a year ago because we've always wanted to end up in the UK um, as it's closer to family. Also, we've had the opportunity to get our son, um, who has Asperger's, into a, an amazing school here. Um, and he's thriving, so that's great. Yeah, that's good. So, <laughs> what prompted you to join ICD? Um, <laughs> well, I, I really had no choice in the beginning. It was all my husband's doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Certificate for in design was my Valentine's gift from my husband six years ago. Really? And before then, um, I was just really complaining about wanting to become a designer instead of just being a mum. Yeah. Um, so also traveling a lot uh, way back when, when we were allowed to do that, just filled that desire. Yeah. Well, how about you, Kirsty? Um, for me, um, I wanted to do interior design for a while. I um, come from a background um, of um, makeup artistry and hair design. So I, yeah, for, for probably about 10 years before I decided to commit to it, I was thinking about doing it. And I, I come from a, a background where my grandfather was an architect and, and my dad's an, an engineer. So there's design in the family, you know, I mean, I. I remember looking at floor plans when I was 10 years old, you know, those yeah. sort of things. So it was there. It was just for me, it was a matter of, yeah, going, you know what, I have to do this now. It's so interesting you say that you um, start as a hairdresser and makeup artist because we get a lot of those yeah. um, transferable skills across. We get quite a lot of people who have had experiences in different parts of the creative industry and things like that. And it's amazing how um, transferable some of those skills are, you know, even coming down to colour and um, things like that, um, which can work across the board. Um, so, so far, how have both of your experiences been 
um, in the course um, and with ICD. You can go first um, if you want. Yeah, you can go if you need. How's, it, how's your experience okay. been? You can only say good stuff because I'm your educator. <laughs> well, um, for me, it's been um, a journey. Um, and I've been with ICD so long now that I've practically become a fixture. <laughs> ICD when, did you, when was that Valentine's Day gift? How many years ago was that? Six years ago. Okay, so you've been with us for a fair while. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here long. Uh, I'm going to have um, to make a new course up just so once you finish. <laughs> well, yeah, I've done a couple now. <laughs> um, for me, um, ICD um, is a design school that really wants to see the students grow and reach their full potential. Um, even if it's just a short two day course of an introduction mm -hmm. to styling. Um, yeah. And I found that the educators are so good um, in that they encourage you to think outside the box, to learn and discover new things. And I found everyone here um, really uplifting and supportive and caring. And even if they don't particularly have the same style as you or the same taste. Yeah. Um, I think um, for me, that is what has made this experience so memorable. Mm. Do you know what? It's actually interesting you say about that, about um, different tastes and things like that, because especially on the um, online, in, in the online world, we're sometimes not um, drawn to one style by the person who's sitting next to us. You really do form your own identity and um, your own yeah. style and it's amazing for me seeing all the students work coming because it becomes so different and such an array of styles because you're not yeah. copying the person next to you really you're, and it's more yeah. um, presenting your unique idea yeah it's mm. that's exciting I think that's mm. the best part of it mm. how about you Kirsty yeah have you found it? yeah um, incredibly fun I mean I've I've enjoyed you know every, every part of the um of the course or even the challenging parts, you know. Um, yeah, you know, incredibly, yeah, as um, Uni said, you know, incredibly supportive um, environment, you know, encouraging um, and just really, really understanding, you know, your educators are there, they understand, you know, you know, what you're going through sometimes, um, you know, and, and I, I just wanted to just um, go on what you were saying, Michael, about that, you know, just the as you know learning online you know mm. you don't probably have that class interaction but you you kind of create your own style yeah. and there's such a uniqueness with online learning um mm. and we'll probably talk, oh, excuse me we'll talk a little bit further more about like you know yeah, um, kind of... things that inspire us online but yeah. i you know i think that's one thing that i really found is that i've really found myself doing it online yeah yeah that was actually going to be my my next question. So thanks for leading yeah. on straight up to that. Um, <laughs> how how has been the online experience for you both? Like how have you have you done it before? Is this the first time you're doing it? Is um how have you um found it? Um, what parts have you found challenging? What parts have you found rewarding? Um. So. For me, uh, back then, um, it wasn't really a, the platform wasn't really like it is now, um, mm. but it, it was through Google Chats. We used to post our stuff through Google Chats. Um, mm. But I, I think um, just doing the new course and being here for as long as I have because of all the traveling that I've done and moving around the world literally while studying, um, mm. it's been interesting just to see how ISCD has adapted um mm. to to course context and yeah. kept it incredibly relevant i mean it's 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 really nothing new to have a couple of updates come through on course material um a couple of times and i yeah. and i like that i must say i think for some people it is a little bit frustrating or could be i don't know but for me <laughs> i i have always found um Gosh, yeah, okay, that's this is the new thing. This is how it's done yeah. now. And and I think that is yeah. really relevant in the industry as well, um, yeah. for interior design. Because yeah. it, it constantly changes, right? You're so right. Even um today, Kirsty I had a presentation with me and we did it all via Zoom. 
And even Kirsty, you made the note, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm getting so good at this communication tool now. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to COVID. Except where her husband halfway <laughs> yeah. started whipper sniffering out the window. <laughs> we couldn't help that. <laughs> to go um, in to tell him off. A technical issue. That was a relationship issue. <laughs> but, um, um, but it's true. And so you do have these challenges um, on the online course. But really, you're building skills which you're going to be using in the future anyway. Like the, these technologies, these um, ways of presenting and communicating are here with us to stay. So studying online is just part of that tapestry, yeah. really. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Right, I think that was my karma talking about banging because that's now my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've both had a um, so you both had good experiences. Um, with studying online and I guess for you Eunice you're living in Wales now so mm. I think when I came on board you were living in Hong Kong yes. um, so how has it um, how has studying online as well as in different countries um, how have you done that how, what's been the difficulties what's been the rewards I, I think um, for me, the, the difficulties um, have not been many. That's, okay. I can truthfully say that. Um, apart from, well, here now the time zone is a little bit, uh, yeah. a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the biggest issue, really. And yeah. also maybe when um, I post stuff um, and are waiting for a reply, it takes a day or two. But I think that's just the nature yeah. of online study. Um, yeah. When you prepare yourself for it, it's not going to be, uh, oh, here's my work. And like in a classroom setting, get an immediate response yeah. to what you've done. Um, yeah. So I've just started adapting to that and just going, well, I'll do the next thing or the next thing. Um, yeah. And just moving on and then going back to it is fine. And I think it's also um, what it has definitely done for me in preparing myself for work um, yeah. is that that I think it's reality of any project will be like yeah. that. You will yeah. have to leave certain things and move on to the next thing and then come back to it later. Mm -hmm. um, there's very few things I think that happen that will make you just completely stop and not be able to move forward. Yeah, I think that's a really um, poignant um, thing you just brought up there. It's like, you're always going to come across a little bit of a hurdle, like especially studying online. And you, there is that probably, we try to max at 24 hours in terms of um, just um, discussion boards and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're learning AutoCAD and you mm -hmm. can't quite make the next step and you've asked the educator, you can't just stop there. You have to keep moving forward. Yeah. And I think that's actually a good just lesson for the industry mm -hmm. as well. You can't just stop at every hurdle that you come across you then have to keep going till you find that answer of that previous yeah yeah one. Mm. Mm. how about you yeah, Kirsty? what have you um have also you what it's any... done sorry no you go sorry. for it i yeah. know uh, i wanted to say what it's done really is uh, although i've been in in different time zones in different places it kind of gives me um the ability to um figure it out yeah, you know, yeah. By yeah. The time, and I think uh, I feel like a little bit of a hey, I did that. You know, yeah, a it's a confidence, you know? isn't it? And I think, yeah. you know, we're very lucky in the sense that we have this rich tapestry of different styles that get infiltrated into our course. And so, you know, we've got um, Eunice here who, you know, like the style in Wales is about, we've talked about, you know, textures and wallpapers and that intricacy because the lifestyle is very much inverted into the house and making it this cozy setting with a little mud room and and Kirsty your project that you're working on latest is this Queensland home inside outside living which is totally different but the lucky yeah. thing is we get to experience both um, different styles yeah I love that I really yeah. appreciate that yeah Mm. I forgot the, what the original question was. Sorry, Kirsty. Did you, did you want to ask me about how I found my studying online? Yeah, how did you? That's that one. Yeah. How did you find <laughs> um, okay. Um, look, I I 
was apprehensive to be honest at first because I had always done, um, you know, I was from old school, you know, sort of learning face to face. Um, and I love that interaction that you get, you know, in class and the collaboration and that. And so I kind of went into it going, this is going to be interesting. But, you know, as I said before, I was quite committed to it. So I was going to, I was going to make sure that I got through it regardless of how I found it. But, um, you know, it's been what what I've loved about the online learning is that um, I can get up at 3 a.m. in the morning, which is what I do quite regularly, and mm -hmm. I sit there and I do a lesson, you know, and I find that sometimes that is the best time for me, yeah. you know, than being in a classroom at 10 o'clock when I should be having a sleep, an hour of sleep or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think it really, really... Yeah. Um, it gels really well with your lifestyle and how you know you work and when the best time yeah. is the most profitable for you. So um, right. that was a big tick for me. And like you know, working, family life, you know, kids, you know, husband, mm. yada yada yada. You know, when do you find the time to study? So um, yeah, so that's what I really loved about yeah. my online learning. And I'll mm. definitely go back and do online learning. Oh, I would. Yeah. You know, I think. Um, you know, I mean, I've always been quite a disciplined person anyway, but it's really taught me about further discipline, you know, yeah. practices within, even within the industry and that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and, yeah, I think um, I was just going to say, you know, like that whole apprehension of not having that collaboration and that, um, you know, I, it's really about you. You really have to put yourself out there in, in terms of that. I think, you know, I had some friends who were interior designers and that's why I sort of reached out to them. But yeah. um, I also, um, and in, in the course, it really encourages you to put yourself out there and to actually get involved with other, you know, organisations and that within the industry. And um, throughout the course, I joined, you know, the IDA up here, which is the Interior Design Association. And just, you know, being able to go along and collaborate with them and be inspired and, you know, that it that kind of filled that void of not having that collaboration of not having that sort of class yeah. you know, interaction um but even even more so like you know like when COVID hit we went into those Skype meetings they were good oh, yeah, so like good. they really helped didn't they so good <laughs> but, you know, um and that was really good you know and I hope yeah that will continue there Michael um <laughs> <laughs> but you know when 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 we could get on and talk and that that was great because um you know we, we we learned quite a bit just listening to other people and what they were going that's through. it you learn um, and, yeah. and i think the key is well you get out as much as you put into it as well if you're yeah. willing to be active within the online community and you're really passionate and you uh um, you know, as connect with other students and stuff and we say towards the end of the um your studies, you end up becoming colleagues and things like that with each other, and they're the, they're the ones who support you. You, you know, as such, you get you're setting yourself up for success. Really, um, you really are, and it's a great learning experience. Yeah, Michael, I, I want to add to that as well, and just saying that you know, if it wasn't for the Zoom meetings that ICD started in the beginning of the um, lockdown, I mean. Um, I would never have met incredible designers like Kirsty or Gonya yeah. or Emma yeah. and um, getting to know you better, Michael, yeah. as well. It's, uh, I think, also, uh, I think it's important to remember that the industry requires you to, to network. It yeah. really, uh, you can only be good and make it in the industry if you actually bring that. And, um, and if you actually start connecting with people, because that person can help you out with an, a design problem that you have or can connect you to that supplier or can bring something in new to your design completely that you just didn't even think about. Yes, sir. And everyone's got different strengths and you'll find that in course, some people are just so good at styling. Some people are so good at hard materials. Some people are really good with their construction drawings and you're never going to be perfect at everything. But then if you are working in a company on your own and you're like, Oh wow, I really need, my friend Gonya, who just put in an amazing kitchen, I need her help. You know, that's when you rope them in, and uh, then I'm sure <laughs> she'll ask you something else down the track. So um, it's true, it's about networking, building, and you need that in the industry yeah. anyway. So if you're learning that um, in the course, um, it's mm. only ever going to help you in the future. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, um, what um, what projects are you both? Well, I know what projects you are, but for everyone else, tell us what projects you're both working on. <laughs> uh, Kirsty, you want to go first? Yeah, Kirsty's. Are you <laughs> already? Actually, actually, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> No, I just feel like I'm going first all the time. I'll, I'll, I'll take that cue. Um, <laughs> um, for me at the moment, so I'm on my last um, project of the course and um, what we're doing in this last project is we're doing a, a residential, um, it's a residential house. It's about six spaces or, <clears throat> excuse me, a minimum of six spaces within that um, dwelling that we have to do. And... Um, so I found a lovely couple here on the coast who've just recently moved down from Ipswich and um, they've moved to the Gold Coast area, you know, just earlier this year before the lockdown. And they built a lovely place in Merrimack and um, it's gorgeous. It's, it's a tri-level house um, with these beautiful architectural elements, you know, a sloping sort of high roof. Um, Ooh, it's just to be honest, it is a designer's dream and they want to put a pool in the side. So they want this real kind of um, indoor, outdoor coastal living. It's all about, you know, living by the coast here and, yeah. um, you know, the houses reflect that and there's this beautiful, you know, interaction that you get between the outdoors and the indoors here and they just want to really um, bring that into the house. So, you know, really thinking about knocking down some walls down the bottom to really open it up and um, have this beautiful, you know, big sliding doors that, you know, they can open up and just, you know, be in the pool one minute and then out in the next and in the living room. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much the project. Yeah. Sounds exciting because I just heard about that earlier, the first time I heard about that one. So I'm actually really excited about that project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your niece, your... You're halfway yeah. through the final um, assessment and you're working on a very exciting project as well. I, I am, I am. Um, so we bought a house um, and that has become my project for my final assessment. Um, as Kirsty said, it's a residential assignment. Um, and it's a, um, I live in North Wales, so in this quaint little Victorian seaside resort town called Thunderdno. Um, and it's also close to the beach, but it's definitely not Australia close to the beach feel. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like I've stepped back into 1876 <laughs> and all the houses are still old. Um, the house that we bought is almost 100 years old. So that's just weird. Um, but you get, you know, the architectural features are very much arts and craft. Um, and it's it's built in an Edwardian style. So, you know, just to be respectful to that type of architectural style, um, uh, we're going for for a um, just a, a house of discovery, basically. Ooh, and that's like that. really that's what it's about. So it's not open in that it's open plan, which is which is what you see a lot in Australia of. And and that, to be honest, was my go-to thing. I wanted to open up the back, but now we're just getting rid of one structural wall <laughs> and a chimney stack. So <laughs> that um, will kind of give a little bit of an open plan mm -hmm. feel. But as you come in, you have an entryway, and then you have the hallway and the staircase, and that leaves leads off to different living areas from there um and you need to go and discover them for yourself uh, which I can't is wait to see it come to I can't, um, no I, I, yes it's going to be great <laughs> yeah. i can't wait to come to wales oh michael yeah. yes I yes be on that plane the first one out <laughs> <laughs> i know and so um for the first part of the project um everyone had to set up your site just like basically the um Depacking your brief, looking at the site, looking at um, the neighbourhood and things like that. Then you start to build your concept. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, Eunice just has started unra um, unravelling and showing us what she plans on doing on um, the interiors. And it's so exciting. It's really <laughs> exciting. It was the first time I saw a glimpse into the actual materials and things like that. So I can't wait to see that um, unfold. Thanks, Mike. Um, so you both work quite well um, in the course and you've, you've had your highs and things. What have you found, what have you found a struggle? You know, you're both mums, um, 
you both um, have had work. You've both like, been busy moving countries, um, having jobs. How, how have you found that? You need to go first this time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, gosh, to put it in a word, um, frustrating at times, yeah. but it's just because... I really love what I do. I, uh, this is what I want to do. Um, yeah. I mean, every single time I hand in something late, I think, oh, gosh, please just, I need to do this because <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> allow me to stay one more week, please. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know, it's something, it's just, um, I think uh, life is going to happen whether you want it to or not. Yeah. But doing this is you got to know why you're doing it mm. you know um mm. i i know and i can i know kirsty is the same um i mean the work that she creates is incredible and it's just it's it's you got to do it for the love of that mm. because that keeps you motivated to stick it out yeah. because then you would just give up <laughs> really That's and i think it's true for anything in life i'm not just saying online studying um and online studying i think is the way forward it is something that's going to happen a lot more yeah. mm -hmm. um and uh, thankfully i think for iscd they they're already there they've yeah. already created a platform that is adaptable that's easy to follow that's interactive um so it's the brand itself that they that they offer and, and what they provide is is really really up there I think and yeah, I've and I've looked at a lot of online different <laughs> online courses so. yeah. yeah yeah how about you Kirsty yeah I just wanted to mention about the online platform so it's um it's called Canvas and um yeah. I, look, I kind of came into the course. I had a bit of an, um, an advantage because I had worked with it previously in um, oh. training, in the training industry. So I kind of came in and went, oh, this is familiar. I know how this is set up. But it is so easy to follow. It yeah. really is. Like the platform, the way they've set it up. And even while I was, you know, um, in you know the progression of doing the course, like it was even better like getting easier and you know and that so you know as um you know, said before you know they're, they're forever developing and designing and bringing new stuff to the table and um you know the canvas platform is so easy to follow mm. um you know the content is so up to date um yeah. and oh sorry that was my job <laughs> I, <just> thought, <laughs> I thought you were coughing then michael <laughs> Um, and, you know, the great thing is, is that we have these amazing um, educators such as Michael who, you know, who work in the industry and they've got this, this wealth of knowledge and, you know, they're, they're able to, you know, help, you know, bring solutions to design problems that we have and that because they've experienced it themselves and, yeah. oh, you know, I was, was that project last week that I was looking at. <laughs> and, and so... You know, and I suppose that was the big thing for me when I was looking for a course was, you know, making sure that the content was up to date, it was relevant, that, you know, we had, you know, educators, you know, being an educator myself yeah. um, and working, you know, um, educating in the video industry, I, I knew the importance of, you know, training and being yeah. in amongst the, uh, the industry, you know, to be current, to be up to date. So th that was a big thing for me and um, they are, they're, they're amazing. So yeah. yeah. And all of our um, educators, we all actually work, currently work in the industry and um, yeah. it's actually, we love sharing our experiences with you guys. It's almost like yeah. a little um, deep brief session. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, Michael. I think also it's um it's created this this atmosphere of more like master and apprentice kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it's master. So true. <laughs> I know, no, it's, you because you've been in there, you've done it, yeah. you've gone before us, kind of a thing. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's personal, right? It's yeah. not just oh, I want to see you do well and tick all the boxes. It's like no, I want to see you become who I think I know you can be. Yeah, that that Very is. Think that is what set it apart for me. Oh, so good. well. Let's um, let's highlight some of you guys. Um, some of your amazing work. Um, I'm just going to share the screen again. Can everyone see that? Can you see that, Eunice? Yes. My screen. Yeah. Okay, good. 
Oh, wait. Mm. Oh, okay, here we are. So here's some, um, we're going to dive into, um, this is Kirsty's work. Um, and we've just literally taken a snippet because there was so much work to go through. Um, and it's also, sh I'll show you Kirsty's work and I'll show you Nisa's work. And it's actually really good to see how they approach and even present and go about design differently. So um, this is Kirsty's, she actually presented this project today. This is her um, commercial design. And um, she, one of her stalls that she made was um, the T2 stall. Um, and then this over here on the right, um, this was her workplace design for a um, law office. Um, so do you want to just give us a quick little snapshot of um, both of these, Kirsty? Yeah, well, um, T2, we, we all know that brand. We've grown up with it. It's a very iconic brand. Um, and I really wanted to take T2 and kind of give it this all grown up kind of feel to it. Um, you know, so I kind of, you know, I, I rechanged the colours and the branding and I kind of wanted to bring that into the space. So, I mean, if, if you walk into any T2, it's always, it, it's often quite dark to start off with, you know. So I wanted to kind of, you know, continue that moodiness into the spaces, but I wanted it more refined. So, um, of course, you know, because they're selling tea as well, um, you know, I was, was very much in the mind frame of, well, I want to use earthy, raw, organic, you know, materials in this. So, you know, we're talking about like, you know, a beautiful um, sensory table made out of, you know, um, you know, a stone, you know, a textural stone that takes you know, centre stage in, in the store. And, um, you know, I've got gridding, you know, in the ceiling, you know, where you've got this exposed ceiling, you know, that we, that we spray painted black, but there's this, you know, metal gridding, that industrial kind of look. And, um, yeah, so there's all these, you know, dark elements going through. And then we've got these pops of orange, you know, to sort of, you know, really... Um, you know, offset that and, you know, once again, you know, entice people and, you know, and anyone walking past that place would look and go, oh, my goodness, like, what is in yeah. there? It looks like a cave, you know. And I'm going into the earth here, but, you know, there's this light. It's like, and, Michael, you said it so well. It's like um, a moth to the flame sort of. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking that facade. When I saw it today, I was just like, that facade and then you juxtapose those bright colours, those oranges and um, those things with that really utilitarian um, concrete palette. And I'm like, the bright colours draws you straight in mm -hmm. and that's the product that you're selling. So you just really nailed it there. And I must point out that um, two things. Kirsty, I love when you talk about um, your designs and the experience that people have during it so it's and you really are thinking about someone walking through the space and how they would experience it um and the second thing is you really have honed your skills this has all been created these 3d drawings um through photoshop so that's really and you've really honed um that skill of yours i don't think i could produce that in photoshop the perspective like that um it's just really great to see you just um elevate your work in this final study period i was just i was gonna say can i can i add to that that um there are so many platforms out there for you know software and that that you can use to you know be able to present your designs and you know sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming with what's out there yeah but i think you know you just commit to something um and you know if, if you like the finish of it or whatever you just commit to it and um you know you get better and better at it and um yeah so don't be overwhelmed <laughs> no and um i think we go to so this is um another one of your um assessments and this was in the last study period so this is um the hard material subject and this is actually my favorite subject um and this is where we're learning about um materials and how we can apply them. So um, Kirsty always has a really strong concept at the beginning, which then um, really dictates her design decision. So we can start seeing her images here and what she wants to achieve. And 
All of this is in response to a brief that she um, has been given. Um, and then this is her, um, one of the many slides, um, um, realization of that brief. So she's made a, you know, uh, uh, materials um, palette down here. We've got the list of finishes, a 3D render, um, and just pulling together all of those ideas to have a resolved project. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, can I just say, <clears throat> excuse me, I love doing material boards. Yeah. <laughs> my face. Yeah, the <laughs> one we saw today was, she, um, Kirsty did a materials board for the T2 store and it's amazing. It's all these um, um, pieces of concrete, then she did these orange zests on it. It was fantastic. Vanilla pods. <laughs> Vanilla pods, <something>. really good. <laughs> It was fantastic. Um, and now we look at Eunice's work. And so Eunice is just like this amazing 3D renderer. She makes these uh, amazing models. And this, she created this model. This is her commercial design project as well. And this is a, um, her model of the Ted Baker store that she created. And it is just amazing and has paneling inside, lattice work and everything. So do you want, um, tell us a little more about this one. <laughs> um, so this one, um, I create. I made this. I started it just, gosh, before the summer break. So that is for you, winter. Yeah. Um, I and um, I went away, and it just, I just had it in my head, and then came back and did that in in a couple of days because it just it just became clear what I wanted to do and if you understand what Ted Baker is all about it is quintessentially British and I think um, creating a store that looks like you walking into an old uh, gentleman's uh, establishment yes. <laughs> in London is really I think what you would expect from Ted mm -hmm. Baker the brand um, yeah. what I what I loved about this um, really uh the the whole subject um the commercial design subject is one it's something i would really like to end up doing and um yeah. myself but um it it is also um it really challenges you to think a little bit outside of the box and think about just branding you know you just don't think about that sometimes so you walk into a store and you go oh this is pretty and but you don't know why and you don't know wow this is amazing and why does it work mm. um so that was really um great for me and i and i wanted to do um and i see kirsty does this as, as well like the the overall whole um design that included the ceiling because it just yeah. finishes you everything. Can kind of see it down here in the bottom right. Yeah, here. it's a little bit down there. Yeah. <laughs> and even these little um, figurines, which were um, panels on the um, external facade, just, I don't know, just these patterns, which are so quintessential British. And then they, I don't know, they look, they just draw you into this um, store. Yeah, yeah, the checkered floor, um, um, the wood panelling finishes and, and all of the, the um, prints that I've used in the people are actually Ted Baker designed prints. So, um, yeah. which is an added little thing about Ted Baker. Um, and and it's, it's, they, they really renowned for their prints and what they do. Yeah. And they really do everything. It's not just a clothing brand. He does literally everything so um it it was just a little bit of of that to bring you in and and i think that's he it, he's quirky so and yeah, he's still quirky. Should be he's just, a he, like his christmas displays are outrageous yes yeah. I, <laughs> I love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that, 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 if it was anyone else you'd be like, oh it'll be a little bit um yeah, lowbrow yeah. but for him he gets away with it he's, it, he's yeah, outrageous. He does. um <laughs> And then this is um, um, Eunice's law office as well. So this is part of design details where we get you to do a workplace design. Once again, um, responding to um, a brief. Um, and this is just one example, but once again, Eunice has gone to the details like the arches, the stone floor. If you wanna have a little chat about this one as well. Um, so that one, um, the law office design, uh, the brief was really um, about creating a space that 
that it's more functional, um, modern, and also um, I think we had to choose an area where we wanted it. And being in Australia, I think what I love about uh, Australian design and what is coming out um, a lot more is it's very crisp, it's fresh, um, loads of use of material um, mm. and texture is coming through when you look at um, designs coming from Australia. So it, it had to really connect with people that live there. So, I mean, yeah. something like this in the UK may not work. Um, yeah. But... Um, I think what I loved about it is it really challenged my design in just creating these arched um, kind of uh, glass wall panels and yeah. doors and um, and how how it would work and how you would set it out out and and really thinking about that. Um, um, I think uh, that. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> Sounds ready for dinner. <laughs> um, that's so good. Um, I think I might bring um, Smita. Smita, are you there? I might get you to turn your camera on. And I thought perhaps um, if there's any questions, I think there's quite a few questions that come through that uh, perhaps um, Kirsty, Eunice and myself can answer. Yeah, there was one um, from Jasmine Marks who would love to know, even though we recommend 15 to 20 hours a week for the courses, how much time did you spend studying per week yourselves, realistically, with your schedule? Uh, are you hey, asking me? Oh. <laughs> Both of you, whoever wants to go first. Yeah. Um, you can if you want, you. Thanks, Kirsty. Um, Literally, I think with, with my schedule, I um, you got to figure out what times you work best. Um, sometimes it's early in the morning, sometimes it's late at night. Um, I think that is the important thing is it, each one is different in and when they work the best. For me, um, I have to, I have a time where I start in the morning. So um, I'm very lucky that my kids are now at an age where they go off um, to school and they only come back at half past four. So I have that entire time to sit down and study. And I, I cannot study at night. I'm just, my brain just goes to mush. So it just, I, I can't do it. But like Kirsty, I can wake up at three in the morning and I can go, yeah, I can do an hour or so yeah. or whatever. So that's something that works for me. I think that is key is you've got to work out what works best for you. Make a, a time and a schedule that works for you and stick to it yeah i think that's it um i think the schedule even within the course we have um, um you know assessment dates and end dates and things like that and that's a guide that we give you but you really have to work out what works for you and make that time efficient for you you know um both you need to you can wake up 3 a.m and do some work i can't do that but you know so that wouldn't be but it's about working out what what times that suit you so you can be most pro um, productive in that time. Yeah. And then sticking yeah. to the highest here as well, having almost like you are going to a class and sticking to the same yeah. schedule for yeah. yourself. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to add to that. Sometimes like in terms of like, because she, she, you know, she asked a question about um, just about like how long, you know, the, the study time per, per week. And um, <clears throat> I, I can honestly say it varies because you'll find there'll be mm. some modules that you just skim through really, really quickly. And, mm. you know, you're done within next to no time. It depends also like what your background is, you know, what you're familiar with, um, you know, there's, you know, some course material that I've never come across before in my life. So, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the online, you know, 3D um, software and stuff, like a lot of us, when we first start off, we haven't worked with that. So mm -hmm. that takes extra time and you, ha you have to be realistic that, you know, sometimes that 15, 20 hours can realistically one week sometimes be, you know, a little bit more because you're just trying to get your head around it. So you just, just be prepared for that. Um, yeah. But like what they do say, you know, with, you know, in terms of timing and that, they're, they're pretty spot on. Um, but yeah, give or take, you know, like, you know, another five hours or, or so, just depending yeah. on what you're learning. 
Yeah. Good might have some subjects that you're really, I suppose, that you find easier as well. So one week, correct me if I'm wrong, you might go a little bit faster than the 20 hours. Definitely. Go, yeah, go because I also come from like a background of, you know, colour and working with colour and things like that. I was really familiar with that. And even styling, I just bang those out, you know, because I was familiar with it, yeah, you know. Um, you know, I kind of worked in, you know, like a retail store before. So I understood about visual merchandising because I'd done it before. So, you know, those things were really quick. They came really quick to me, um, you know, whereas opposed to maybe learning AutoCAD. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, we have got one more question from Rochelle Carr, early student. She says, I'm just wondering how, so to Eunice and um, Kirstie in particular, how did you manage to be able to work on the real house project and did you advertise or know the client? Um, so I think Michael has said earlier on one of um, the design students, um, Emma, she actually advertised and that's how she got her client. Um, for me, it, it just happened uh, that right time, right place, <laughs> I bought a house. And so that accepted the, the offer of your house and you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay now. <laughs> Don't go buy your own house. That's, Don't I'm buy not your saying own house. that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it, um, we, we've we talked earlier about you've got to put yourself out there. And I think this is what challenges you in your final subject is you've got to yeah. do that. You've actually got to go and look for somebody. Um, and there's always a, a friend. There's always a friend that has to pay friendship fees and become the client. Yeah. So yeah. that it's, it's, it's yeah. not impossible. You can do it. Exactly. And... Um, it's not required that you have to do a real project for your um, last assessment at all. Like you can um, um, create a brief and um, create um, and find your own site, um, which isn't going to ever eventuate. But once again, it's what you put in is what you get out. If you can, you know, network and find, even if it's not the perfect project, even if it's you're only going to do one bedroom, but you then decide just to design the rest of the house for them. Um, that will be look so great in your portfolio. So when you can then go out to the workforce and you say, I've actually already started, I've done this and this, this, that shows to your venture employer, oh, wow, they've got to get up and go. They're going to go do this. Or you may even start building your own um, portfolio and start doing your own projects, start your own business. Mm -hmm. How did you find your, is it your friend, Kirsty, the one in Queensland? Friend of a friend. Yeah, friend of a friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, sometimes a better way to go, a friend of a friend. That way you don't have to talk too much. You can just get in there and get out. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you just, just don't know them personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, was, I was just going to say, I think it's Emma at the moment. Um, I was looking and she has, she put her, um, she put a little ad up on Facebook. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. She got quite a few responses from from just putting that ad up on Facebook. So you just, as, as Michael said, you just got to put yourself out there. Yeah. If, if you don't know someone, then you just, you know, put it out and, there and say, you yeah. know. Yeah, same as Gonya. Gonya went to her neighbour. Her neighbour was like, oh, um, I think it was just like, oh, can I do your house? And the neighbour's like, yeah, no worries, go for it. <laughs> and now, right now, she just got the brand new kitchen and dining room installed and things like that and looks amazing. And Ganya's yeah. posting her beautiful photos online at the moment. And so once again, just, um, you know, networking, seeing what's out there. Um, yeah. Has any anybody... Oh yeah, one more question from Amy. Um, any tips on juggling working kids and study? <laughs> When, um, when you can, I, those, those 3 a.m. mornings are the best for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just think you, ha you have to work it out yourself, Amy, what, what works for you. And, um, you know, I think, you know, the on, online learning, it's, you know, it is, it is difficult with family and that, but the college is incredibly understanding. And I think if you um, are open and you communicate with them, you know, about your situation, what you're going through, 
you might have a week where you know you, your kids are sick so you can't get on and you can't study but you know if if you're communicating with them and letting them know where you're at and that I think that that really really helps mm. um you know and they're, they're incredibly understanding incredibly you know yeah yeah uh, I think also um you get a list of what you can do in a week um that that gets sent to you at the beginning of each study block and I think I try to as much as I possibly could stick to it but like um Kirsty says life happens life and I think it, it's not as long as you communicate where you are at yeah. that helps one yeah. and two I think also it's important that you you don't you don't get overwhelmed by it and yeah. feel like you're the worst student in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, the mere fact that you're doing it and you're yeah. doing it um, mm -hmm. with other responsibilities in your life, yeah. um, uh, that should be commended and just keep at it. Just, you know, let it go. It didn't work this week. Next week is a new week and do that. But try to stick to a schedule that yeah, works. Yeah, that's really, really great advice. Mm -hmm. I was just going to add... Sorry, did you want to just quickly add to that? Yeah, Sorry. Um, I, I found that some weeks I got a lot done as well. So it made up for those weeks that I didn't get anything done. So I've literally bang out like an assessment and like five or six exercises in a week sort of thing. And you just go, oh my goodness, how did that happen? You know, yeah. <laughs> and it makes up for those weeks that you don't, but that sometimes you just can't, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. It, it, it's ebbs and flows in life you know what i mean sometimes you're really powering through and you're ahead and sometimes you know life as i said life happens and um the quality of your work you feel like it's not up to scratch but you know you just have to hand it in knowing that you could probably have done better so we and as you know said as long as that communication is open with us it's 100 percent fine yeah. you know? um what i might do is i might just get smita to take over a little bit and just tell, run them through the courses um, and what's offering. And um, yeah, sure. Okay, beautiful. You're on the page already. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so we'll start here with our two largest courses for every, um, everybody who's thinking about studying um, online. Um, these two are our accredited courses, so the certificate for and the diploma of interior design. Uh, we have monthly intakes, so that's the last Wednesday of every month. So, for example, next um, our upcoming intake for November is on the 25th, next Wednesday, just a week to go. Um, the certificate four and the diploma uh, vary in duration. Certificate four is only one year, uh, where the diploma is two. Um, of course, you know that it's 100% uh, delivered online. Um, the main thing about self-paced here it means you can go so. You can you have a minimum hours as we mentioned before 15 hours for the cert four um, and 20 for the diploma per week you can go faster but you we wouldn't recommend going slower um, than that otherwise you might risk needing an extension on your study block for example um, the timetable as Eunice and Kirsty mentioned you know suits suit your time your your lifestyle 5 a.m or midnight whatever works for you um, so cert four entry requirements is a minimum year 12 high school certificate or certificate three and the diploma is a year, year 10 sorry and the diploma is year 12 or certificate four minimum. The total course fees certificate for is $7,450 um, and you can pay upfront um, twice a year or every month over 10 months making that $745 a month. Now for the diploma, that's 13,500 for the total course fee. Um, again, you can pay upfront twice a year or in monthly installments. We use um, a company called Easy Debit, really easy. Easy, pun there, not intended. <laughs> um, uh, over 16 months, so that makes it $844 a month if you wanted to go down that route. Otherwise, the diploma has the added benefit um, of um, VSL, VET Study Loan. Um, if you're a citizen, you are automatically eligible. So I can always give you more information about that if you wanted to reach out to me. Okay, so the certificate for an interior decoration. One year long, you'll get the qualification of an interior decorator. Um, 
the structure of the course is that it's broken down into two study blocks. Um, and each study block is six months long. Um, and in each six months, each study block, you have four subjects, as you can see here, design and color, communications, spatial design, design history and practice in the first one. Um, so you'll expect four assessments maximum per study block. And as Eunice mentioned earlier, um, it's really handy because you're given a study planner at the start of every study block. So you know exactly where you need to be up to, um, week 10 to week 24 or 25. And the job... Oh, oh sorry. I was sorry. quick off the mark on that was, one. Pardon? <laughs> I was quick off the mark on that one. <laughs> I was just going to mention, because I think a lot of people I speak to are really interested in software. Um, so software um, in the CERT 4 is, we'll, we'll cover Adobe Creative Cloud, um, Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, and SketchUp as well. Um, so this one, the CERT 4 will cover that. Um, that's it, next slide. Yeah, and so like you, we touch bases on those software programs, and as we really give you the basic tools to learn them, but as Eunice and Kirsty will tell you, they're just the foundation skills. Then you build upon them throughout the subjects and the coursework. You then, um, you know, build that understanding of the programs and you start choosing which ones you like to use and work with. So the Diploma of Interior Design um, goes for two years, but it's exactly the same structure as the Certificate 4. Um, so you've got four study blocks here, so broken down, um, and you've got 16 subjects, so four in each study block, exactly the same. Um, this one here will give you a qualification of an interior designer, not decorator. Um, as you can probably see, the first two study blocks is pretty similar to the certificate four. Um, and then study blocks three and four, you jump into uh, more hard material, structure of a property, um, and AutoCAD, what everyone loves. So again, like Michael said, foundations, but it is a huge program, so you're given the foundations, but um, and every, is, is that right, uh, Michael, that you're, ex if you want to, you can use AutoCAD for subsequent assessments just to practice and add on to your... Yeah, absolutely. Like at the end of the day, like at the end of, um, say, we're entering to study period four, um, you start becoming, you start creating your own um, identity as a designer. So you start, look at Kirsty's work. She's a fantastic Photoshopper. She creates her amazing designs through Photoshop and makes these beautiful elaborate um, 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 uh, material palettes. Whereas Eunice, she's got this really amazing talent to work in um, SketchUp and then take it in and then she does these amazing AutoCAD drawings, these technical drawings, which are just phenomenal. So it, you start to then become, an, create your own identity and what you like to use, how you like to communicate your ideas. So once again, we give you the foundation skills, but then you can then start curating how you use those skills. Yeah. All right. All right, onto our short courses. So these ones here aren't um, accredited. That's the biggest difference between the CERT for the diploma and the, and the short courses. Um, got three nice little six week courses here. Um, perfect for beginners um, or if you're curious about studying online and you don't want to commit to the huge one or two year course. So just to test the waters. Um, the Styling Essentials one is sponsored by Home Beautiful. Um, so that will go through the you know, fundamentals of spatial planning, um, how to create mood um, and all of the short courses, you'll have learning exercises throughout the course, but you won't have educator support. That's one thing to note designed on uh, off of peer-to-peer -peer learning. You'll be invited to a forum with other students where you can mingle and comment on each other's work and help each other out. Um, and you'll have one ultimate project at the end, which is um, optional. Um, the Color Essentials course will be, will cover psychology, terminology, color tools, like the grayscale um, gray tool and the color wheel. Um, and the ultimate project in this one is to create your own color scheme. So it's a lot of fun. Um, this one's sponsored by Hames Paint. Um, the last one is surface design. So that's all about repeat pattern making. Color, you go a little bit um, into the color, the color wheel and how to use color in your patterns. Um, and then the ultimate project in this one is to create your own wallpaper. So it's a lot of fun if you love fabrics and textures. 
So they're usually $650. Um, right now they're 30% off, so that brings it down to $455 um, each course. If you were to do all three, that essentially means you get one for free. So if you, if you, um, they're based off of three hours a week. So if you did all three, it'd still be 12 hours, um, sorry, nine hours a week, roughly. So if you pop in the code save now, um, jump on our website, pop that in, you'll automatically get 30% off. Um, it's that straightforward. Awesome. If you haven't already, uh, follow us on our socials. Um, we've got Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest at ICD Education. Yeah, and I think that's, and that's about it. it. Oh. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to thank you, Samita, for that. And I really want to thank Eunice and Kirsty um, taking time out of their busy, literally busy schedules and their study schedules and their final study block. And time is of an essence for them. So um, thank you so much for joining us um, and sharing your experiences. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you as always. Um, and I hope um, everyone else um, in the webinar has um, enjoyed your chat. Um, and thank you for joining us.